Hello, Kevin here with Kevin's Way Works. Today, I'm having an issue with my 2002 Dodge Ram 1500 where the brake and ABS lights are on. So let's see if we can fix this Kevin's Way. As you can see from the gauge cluster, this guy has 196,897 miles on it. Overall, this has been a very trouble-free vehicle. However, about 550 miles ago, I had an issue where the brake pedal would go to the floor after holding it for a few seconds. And this issue ended up being the dump valve in the ABS hydraulic module. Those aren't serviceable, so I bought a new old stock one that had never been installed in a vehicle, and that did fix the problem. Just prior to that, while troubleshooting this issue, I also replaced the master cylinder because it was the cheaper of the two, and there was no way to really distinguish whether it was the master cylinder or the ABS module. So anyway, here we are 550 miles later, and we have these two lights on, which seem to point to the two items that I replaced. So I have my Autel dongle hooked up, and this is what I'm seeing. So the fluid level switch keeps fluctuating from closed to open, as you just saw. Let's read the codes. As you can see, this has a code 78 foundation brake message. I did a little research on this already and everything says that this is unrelated to ABS. It's related to the brake system minus ABS and really the only thing it could possibly be is the brake fluid level sensor. Let's go under the hood and I'll give the brake fluid reservoir a few taps and we'll see what happens. Well, it only shows open now um, but before when I was doing this it would flip between open and closed let's get a multimeter and probe this and we'll see what it shows for resistance from my research this should show 10,000 ohms when there's enough fluid in it to raise the float all right I have my multimeter set up where you should be able to see it let's get this connector unplugged and we'll get the multimeter connected I have this set at 20,000 ohms. Let's give it a little tap and see if we see anything. Nothing on 20,000 ohms. Let's try 200,000 ohms. There we go. Now we have a reading. 55,000 ohms and looks like it's fluctuating. Let's tap it again and we'll see what we get. All right, so it looks like it rises and then it drops back down slowly. So let's give it a tap again. Huh, now it shows open circuit. So that confirms it, guys. The float in this 550 mile old, brand new brake fluid container is bad. I actually kept the original since it was good. So let's go get that out and we'll test it and see what it shows. Okay, we're set up on my outdoor workbench slash trash container. Here's the part information for the new one that's in the truck now. So I have my multimeter connected and as you can see, it shows closed circuit when the fluid is low or empty, which is the position that it's currently sitting in. Let's go ahead and flip this over, which will simulate a full container and we'll see what happens. There you go, guys. It shows 10,000 ohms just like it should. The containers look identical, so I think we can just swap containers. That way I won't have to switch the entire master cylinder and I won't have to bleed the brakes. This is uh, reverse Torx. I don't have a reverse Torx socket, but I have a number seven reverse E-Torx, and this fits on here just fine. And the other retainer on the other one is actually just a metric hex bolt. I have this old Tupperware container that my wife is going to toss because she couldn't find the lid. So it makes a great drain pan. So let's get the remaining fluid dumped into it. All right, that's all drained. To get this out, I should be able to just tug on it. Just like so. And this one has markings on it that says it's made by TRW 
the other one is made in China for AC Delco. I'm not going to do a warranty replacement on this because I'd have to remove the master cylinder, which would mean I'd have to bleed the brakes. Again, I don't want to have to do that. So let's go over and suck the fluid out of the one on the truck. All right, so I have my liquid vac set up. I'm going to give this a few pumps, and I have the tube over here in the back side. Let me get you guys moved over here just a bit so you have a better view. As you can see, there are two, there are actually two separate areas inside of this container. One for the front brakes and one for the rear. It's kind of a, just a little safety mechanism. In case you lose the rear, the front will still work. If you lose the front, the rear will still work. They're actually partially connected internally by small passages so I'll need to switch from side to side to get it all. You have to be careful with brake fluid because it can seriously damage the paint. Urethane isn't as easily damaged like others, but if you do spill it, uh, be sure to clean it up immediately to avoid any damage to your painted surfaces. All right, now that all the fluid is removed, let's remove the screw. This guy is seven millimeters and be sure to put a rag underneath to catch any remaining fluid that may drip out. Kind of rock it around a bit while pulling up and it comes right out. Let me go set this aside and I'll grab the original container. Here's the old one. I compared it to the bad one and everything's identical so it should just pop right in. And that should be in. Let me check it from this side just to be sure. Alrighty, all looks good. Let's install the retainer that came with the new master cylinder since we know it fits properly. I'm sure there's a torque spec for this, but just don't go crazy tightening it up. Just snug it up. Snuggy Snuggy is all that's needed. I'm going to swap the new cap with the original cap. This yellow one is the original cap. And this black one is the new cap. Alrighty. I'm going to hook this multimeter up to this and we'll watch it while I pour the new fluid into it. As you can see, we have closed circuit when the container is low or empty. This is uh, dot three from the factory, but I switched it over to dot four, which is completely compatible, but it basically just has a higher boiling point. As I pour this in, as soon as the float starts rising, we should see 10,000 ohms on the multimeter. We should be getting close to reaching the float. And there goes, 10,000 ohms. Oh, shoot. I almost lost it, guys. I'm going to stop right about there. Let's reinstall the cap, and we'll give it a few taps to make sure the meter doesn't fluctuate again. Okay, guys, all looks good. In case you're curious, here's the dongle I'm using to read the modules in this vehicle. This is an Autel Maxi AP, AP200. Hopefully that'll focus. If not, I'll put a little picture of it on the screen. I think I paid about 55 bucks for this. They might be a little more now, um, but back when I bought it a few years ago, they were about 55 bucks. And this basically just talks to your phone via Bluetooth. It does have its limitations. There's a one to two second lag or so between updating values. And it has very limited 
bi-directional capabilities. Let's get this plugged up and we'll see what it shows now. I'm going to select Dodge and it now has to connect to the VCI, which is that dongle I was talking about. So it's connected. I do have to do a manual selection with this vehicle because it's too old for auto selection. And this process is actually a bit faster with newer vehicles. Let's select ABS and read the codes. Let's clear the codes. Why aren't they clearing? Oh, duh. <laughs> guys, guys, guys. It helps if you hook up the connector. Oh, my goodness. All right. Let's try this again. I can't believe I did that. So that time the codes erased and I didn't hear the check engine light bing from inside the truck. So I think we are good to go. Now the brake fluid switch still shows open, which is what it was actually showing before, even though it was throwing the code 78. And this just goes to show you that you can't always rely solely on a code reader. You'll end up firing the parts cannon at it if you do that. So it's always best to diagnose first to be sure before you do any part changes. In this case, we're showing open, but because ohms were not within specification, it's still through that code 78. So basically it's looking for something around 10,000 ohms. I don't know what the plus or minus ohms allowance is, but we obviously were way outside of that since we were up in the 35 to 55,000 ohm range. Okay, everyone, so that is how you troubleshoot a Code 78 on a 2002 Dodge Ram 1500. Anyway, you guys know what to do down below. If you have any thoughts or questions, go ahead and hit me up in the comments. All right, guys, you have a great remainder of your day, and thank you guys for watching. Kevin's Way Works. Uh-oh.